All right, the last one is going to be use Axios. And just because it's a little bit big, I'm going to create a new file called use Axios here. All right? Oh, new file, sorry. New file. And also I'm going to add a dependency called Axios. This is the same as doing npm install. All right, use Axios. All right. So here I'm going to import default Axios from Axios, right? And I think that, I mean, you should know what Axios is. It's just to make HTTP requests, all right? Very, very simple. And uh, here, let's do export or just const use Axios. And by default, um, we are going to ask for an Axios client. Axios instance, because Axios allows you to um, configure to set some configuration, some customization, for example, Axios allows you to set default URLs or set automatic headers or stuff like that. So we're going to get an Axios instance. And if we don't get it, we're going to pass the Axios that we imported. So for example, if they don't send us the Axios instance, then we're going to pass the um, the, we're going to get just the default Axios from the package. All right. Because like I said, Axios allows you to create an instance and you can configure it and you can send headers with it. So maybe our user will want to make requests with their instance. If they don't have an instance, then we're just going to uh, set one as a default. And also we are going to get an options um, object. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check and if options that URL doesn't exist, then I'm going to return because we need a URL. So here I'm going to do const, uh, let's do just request and I'm going to do use actions, export default, use actions, use actions here. And the options URL will be the first one. And I already have my URL copied, so I'm going to paste it here. This is just to get the latest torrent information. No biggie. All right, let's just close this for a bit. So Axios, my URL, that's the first, and I'm not giving it, as you can see here, I'm not giving it the, inst the instance because I don't, don't, don't care. All right. Now here, let's set the, uh, the state. So the state will be this set state will be this and we're going to make an object inside of user state. This one will be loading will be uh, true by default. And what else? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, error will be no. And data will be no. All right, cool. Now let's use effect. And what I'm going to do in use effect is to call Axios, but I am going to protect it from updates because I don't want to update anything. And now here, what I'm going to do is before that, let me return state. So now here I am going to do loading data. What is it? Loading data and error. So now I'm going to console log them loading data and error. And as you can see by default, login, loading is true, data and error are no. Awesome. Let's just make a string, it's better. Uh, loading. So that's how it looks. Loading, error, and data. Cool. All right. So now let's actually do the request. And all we have to do is in use effect, we're going to use uh, Axios instance. And we're going to pass the configuration, which is the options. 
all right and we're gonna do then and then we have the response so what I'm going to do is uh, set state whatever is before state plus loading false and data let's do data here so now as you can see it's loading true and then loading is false and data is an object object which I guess doesn't show up here or we can just do JSON stringify data and data data and then boom all the data coming as you can see right there look at that all the data coming crazy so easy so clean so beautiful now if there is an error I'm not gonna do then I'm gonna do catch and that will be error so I'm gonna do set state whatever is before state loading false and um, error will be error all right so that is on catch awesome what else what else are we missing axios then this catch this and as you can see here there is no error so in this case whoa we only get two when it's loading and when it's not loading and we have the data a status okay a status message successful all that stuff my god okay yeah look at that status okay data whatever movie count whatever so it's, that's how easy it is it's super super simple now this is not over yet what if we make a way of refetching this thing of making it again like of making use effect do it again that would be cool wouldn't it like refetch refetch so yeah let's do that how do we make use effect run I think you already know how how do we make use effect run very well if we put something here and that thing here changes here on the brackets on the dependencies if we put something on the dependencies and the dependency changes then use effect in this case the access request will happen again so let's do it let's make a trigger and then here set trigger and we're gonna use use state and by default the trigger let's say it's zero right and here we're gonna do trigger and here we're gonna do trigger as well okay so now as you can see use effect is look watching trigger but in this case trigger is not gonna change we need to make it change so instead of returning only state I am going to, I'm going to return the state plus a new function that I'm gonna name refetch and here we're gonna work with refetch let's make it happen const refetch and what refetch is going to do is that it's going to set the state to loading true and everything else whatever and is going to set the trigger to a new date I don't know if you know what new date does but but basically it does is well what it does is that it creates a weird ass number look at this so whatever that changes it or you can do to is a string or date that now is it like this like that and as you can see this gives you numbers so what we're going to do is set the trigger to whatever number here instead of this number sorry is going to be date that now so basically we're just changing it to some random ass number and that will make it happen that we're going to have a refetch because trigger will change and if trigger changes then use effect gets executed again so we have a refetch 
that's it awesome so now here we can have another one which will be refetch let's make a button refetch And just to fuck around, let's see this reply. My God, look at how much shit. All right, I just want you to see, we're gonna do data that status. All right, so here we're gonna say, if data exist, data and data that status, status. All right, instead of console logging this bullshit, we're just gonna look at this. And if it's loading, let's do one more h2 loading 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 all right and let's open this here so you can see this is loading and we didn't set loading to false oh let's not do loading like that let's do loading like this so you can see it's loading and then the status is 200 great and then if we click refresh loading again status 200 refresh loading again and it goes back to 200 and we are done look at that beautiful hook i think this is the most complex one we did because we're faking triggers just to trigger a refresh but it's super freaking cool isn't it awesome oh i love it i love it i love it i love functional programming it's the best thing ever freaking love it all right people see you on the next one done bye bye